So welcome to today's webinar, using video templates to create branch scenarios in Beyond and Articulate Storyline. It's great to have you on today's webinar. And let's get started and go through. We'll do a few housekeeping points. Firstly, all of you are in listen only mode. You can communicate with us at any time using the chat panel. Secondly, you'll receive a recording of this webinar within the next day. And finally, at the end of the webinar, there will be a survey and we'd love to know your thoughts and feedback. So please feel free to fill this in. So on today's webinar, you have myself, Charlotte Morris. I'm one of the e-learning solutions consultants here at Omniflex. And we also have Greg Quinn, who is the product marketing manager at Beyond. Hey, everybody. In today's session, we hope to address four key points. These are transforming templates in Beyond, why branching, developing in Storyline, and then finally Q&As. We aim to share tips and tricks on how to really personalize your video templates in Beyond and how you can combine both Beyond and Articulate Storyline to create engaging and interactive e-learning courses through the use of branch scenarios. So without further ado, let's begin. I'm gonna hand you over to Greg now, who can give you a bit more information about Beyond and talk through how to transform your Beyond templates to your heart's content. And I'm just gonna introduce you to one of our lovely videos for our Clap for Carers. So how far away. Nation. To all of our key workers, thank you. Find your brand new, very British characters in Vion Studio now. Hello everybody, this is Greg Quinn here. Just give me one moment to share my screen. Uh, Charlotte, I think you have to hand it over to me. You should be able to do it now. Got it. So hey everyone, um, I am just going to start for those of you who aren't aware by telling you guys a little bit about Beyond. Um, Beyond is an online animated video creation platform designed to allow professionals to quickly and easily create video for training, e-learning, marketing, sales, and more. We live in a world of noise where everything is trying to capture our attention. We have phones dinging, we have emails coming in, there are ads everywhere. We're always being bombarded with information. And video is the perfect way to cut through that noise. Mixing moving images and audio allows you to tell a story and stories resonate with people, which makes sure they retain your message. While Beyond is easy to use, we know that not everyone has the same level of creative vision, which is why we've introduced our templates page, a page full of pre-built templates for almost any scenario. They're the perfect starting point for a project. Since we're gonna be talking about branch scenarios with Charlotte in just a few minutes, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up a template from the templates page and build a scene for Charlotte to work with. So what I'm looking at right now is our templates library on Vion.com, which is a fantastic place to start any project. And basically all you have to do to get here is go up to go to beyond.com and go up to our showcase tab. Then you've got the template library. From there, what you can do is you can scroll down 
you can see there's a search bar where you can type in you know any scenario you're trying to start start something based on you can search by job role category or style so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab one of our brand new uk templates here that's full of our new assets and that's the video that we just watched with charlotte so all i have to do is click open this template and the whole video will load in my beyond account Sorry, just giving things a second to load on up here. Okay. So, I already know that Charlotte's going to be making a fire safety video and that we have a scene with firefighters in it in this template. So what I'm gonna do to start is I'm going to get rid of everything except for our intro and our firefighter scene. Just a few clicks here. Oops, click to clear instead of delete. And we are down to the scenes we want. So what I'm gonna start with is working on our intro scene here. All I have to do is a couple of clicks and I'm able to edit text. Just like that. And I'm able to delete things. So taking a look at this, you know, if we're doing fire safety in the home, this, the assets we have up here in the corner, they just don't make much sense. So what I'm gonna start with is I'm gonna click on them. I'm gonna click replace. And real easy here, you can see the props menu pops up. Now, since we're doing a fire safety video, I'm just going to type in fire. And we see all the different assets that pop up for fire. So let's just grab a couple of them here. And like you can see, with replace mode enabled, I'm able to simply click on a couple more assets. Let's go with, a, uh, let's go with an alarm. And then just because this one, you know, it, it kind of clashes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this asset here. Replace it with, let's go with the blue fire. Move things around just a little bit. And as you can see, it's incredibly easy to adjust your templates so that you can completely change whatever you're looking at. So I think just to add a little bit of spice to things, I'm gonna go up here to props again. And when I was looking before, I saw a fire engine. I think I want it to come in from off the screen. So I'm just gonna adjust you a little bit, move it down. And then, like I said, I want it to come in from off the screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a motion path, which is an incredibly easy way to make it so that your props and assets have lifelike movement. And really all you have to do is click it, click add motion path, and then you have this ghost that appears. You move the ghost to where you want your final prop to end up, move the fire engine that we got here off the screen, and then I'm just going to add a slight delay here, let's say half a second, because by by default, what'll happen is your, uh, your motion will start immediately upon the scene starting and end immediately with the scene ending. So we've added a half a second and we'll take a look and see what our new intro slide looks like by clicking the preview button. Great. So now we'll move on and take a look at the next scene with the firefighters. Now this is almost what I want, but we've already got a few things going on and that I don't like. 
First of all, we've got the camera set up because this scene was based on camera movement. As useful as the camera tool is, what's gonna happen here is if we have the camera set up, the movement's gonna get in our way. So I'm going to go up to the camera tool in the upper right corner here, and I'm going to click remove. Now what we can see is that everything is really zoomed out. It's not great for an e-learning course where we're gonna to wanna to see characters and action and motion. So what I'm gonna do is the very simplest thing I can. I am going to grab a couple of these buildings. I'm gonna highlight them. I'm gonna delete them. And then I'm just going to highlight everything else and expand it a little bit to fill up the screen. So you can see it's incredibly easy to adjust your Beyond templates. You know, anything that's in it is easily switchable for any other prop or asset, and you can quickly and easily take them and make some slight tweaks so that you can immediately get what you want or need um, in order to create a brand new scene or a brand new complete, uh, complete video. Now I think with just a couple of movements here, we have a good scene for Charlotte to start her video with. So what I will do is go up to over here. Now Beyond has the ability to download and share your videos. So if I were to be completely finished and ready to upload, what I would do is I would click download and you can see you can generate your videos in either 720 or 1080p. But because we're not downloading at the moment, what I'm going to do is go up here and enable the link, copy it, and share it with Charlotte and then she'll have a fully editable version of our video to start working on in her e-learning course. And with no further ado, I will kick things back over to Charlotte. So thank you so much, Greg, for that wonderful insight into how to start to use templates to personalize your needs within and beyond. I'm just going to actually reshare the initial video, which was for Key Workers Thank You, um, because a few of you couldn't initially hear it. So let me go and share my screen again with some sound. And do pop into the questions panel if there's any issues with being able to hear. Lockdown has taught us all a lot, but more than anything, it taught us to appreciate those we've taken for granted. From our parents to dustbin workers. Our police force. Our ambulance service. And our firefighters. And those working to feed the nation. To all of our key workers, thank you. Find your brand new, very British characters in Vion Studio now. Hello everyone, if you could just let me know you can hear me, that'd be great. If you put that in, oh fabulous, thank you so much, sorry. Um, so, first of all, um, we are gonna be going into the second part of the webinar. So at this part, I will provide you with a step-by-step -step guide of creating branch scenarios with Beyond and Storyline. I do skip over some of the finer details of the process. However, if you do need some help or have any questions throughout, Pop them in the Q&A panel 
and either myself and Greg will be more than happy to help at the end. First of all, what are branch scenarios? Essentially, branch scenarios allow your learners to take control and develop skills without the fear or risk of failure. Each branch scenario is made up of what we call the three C's. This is the challenge, the choice, and the consequence, whether that's good or bad. Before we dive into what it looks like in StoryLearn, I just wanna show you an overview of what it looks like when you start to plan and map out what your course is going to look like and your branch scenario. It's always good practice to start to map out what this will look like before you get in. Otherwise, you can create too many scenarios and you're not gonna know which ones link where. Now what I'm actually gonna do is come out and show you an example of a branch scenario that incorporates beyond content. So let's dive in. And again, I'm just gonna share my computer with sound. In this example, what we're going to do is you'll be able to see John is at his house. And the fire alarm is going off. What we will decide here is one of three answers to the question. What should John do? If we answer, he should ignore it. Then the story continues in a certain style, depending on the answer that is given by that learner. What you were able to do is even when the wrong answer is given, you the learner are able to continue and it will highlight the best answer to the questions. And in this case, it's investigating the fire and then calling 999. Yay, John has now selected the correct answer. So how did we actually get here? How did we start to develop this choice? So what we want to do is go into the Vion Studio. What you can see here is we already have our, our four separate videos that we're going to be using in our project. We've got our scenario that starts when the question is asked. And then based on what answer is given, the learner will be directed through any one of these three options here. Now what we're going to do is actually go into Storyline and we are going to want to start to add in our Beyond videos. So let's jump right in. Now, essentially when you start to create your courses within Storyline, you're going to start to see a branch scenario appear which will look something similar to this. We currently have a blank slide, and as you can see as well, best practice in Storyline is to always remember to label every part of your course. We're gonna dive into the blank scene. And at this point, we're gonna to wanna to come and pop in our video, which is how to put that fire out scene. So let's go to insert, video, video from file, and again, we're going to just pull that video in. Now, currently, my slide is actually set to a 16.9 ratio, but Storyline will automatically open as a 4.6 ratio. So what you're going to want to do to make sure that those Vion videos pull through and fit fantastically is go into design, press story size, and then you're going to want to set it to a 16.9 ratio. And voila, your video will sit perfectly. Layers are a great way of providing extra information and extra elements to a course that, that there aren't an extra slide, but sit on top of a particular slide. What we want to occur here is that when the timeline of this video ends, we're going to want a feedback layer to pop up. So in order to do that, I'm gonna come over to slide layers. I'm gonna add a new layer 
and I'm going to title this feedback. Again, I recommend for good practice to always make sure you label everything. Now, when we are in this slide, um, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure that when this ends, we can jump to that feedback layer. So in order to do that, we are going to pull something in called a trigger. For those of you that aren't familiar with triggers in Storyline, the trigger wizard is going to be your best friend. Every single interaction you need to make interactivity in your course is done through the trigger wizard. What you'll see is we have action, when, and conditions. And if I go to action, I want it to jump to my layer or show layer. And the layer we want it to go to, it has picked up feedback and that is the one we want. We want it when, not when the timeline starts, but when the timeline ends. And then the object we want is video one. And I'm just going to press OK and I will see my trigger now appear. Now, what we're going to want to do is come into our feedback layer. And at this point, we're going to want to insert some of that feedback. So how do we go about doing that? Well, I'm going to go to the insert ribbon. And under here, we've got so many choices of how we can add our own media into Storyline, but also how to add some interactive objects as well. We're going to add a continue button here as well. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a text box. And best practice when we're doing branch scenarios, just like that example from that previous slide where you might want to map out that journey that that user is going to take, we've actually got our own uh, Word document where we actually keep that data as well. So anything that you want to put on specific slides, you know, be sure to make sure you've got that mapped out. So I'm just going to come in and paste in this text. Now, one of the main benefits of Storyline is that every single element can be completely customized to suit your own branding and to suit your company's needs. You can import your own font, and you can also use your own color schemes as well. Under the insert ribbon, I did briefly touch on it, but we do have the options of adding an interactive object. And when we open this layer slide, what we're going to want to happen is that we want the user to go to the correct answer. So I'm going to come in and pop a button. And I'm going to call this continue. Now, we're going to want this button to jump to a specific slide. And so we're going to go back to our trigger wizard. And we're going to say jump to slide. The slide we want it to go to is the cool 999. When, so we want when the user clicks, but again, we could do things like double clicks. And then the object is button one. And Storyline will always be intuitive and in picking up whatever you've got on your timeline as well. Now, we know what this is looking like from a design perspective, but how is this looking for our learners? So what we can do is we can come into preview in Storyline and we can actually see what this starts to look like. And you'll also notice that you'll be able to preview it in the various different devices as well. Best practice, I always love after every time I've done a slide to open it up and make sure that our text appears. So I can see that's all working. I'm very pleased. Now I'm going to come out of here. And this time, I'm actually going to go back to story view. And I want to go ahead and preview what my entire course looks like. So how is this piecing together now it's finished? So I'm going to come and select the entire project and see what it looks like. And we'll also see Greg's lovely intro slide in the beginning part of this as well.
ignore it. It could be the smoke alarm. So let's go through. And then our scene is going to continue. Now, this may only be a small snippet of a branching scenario, but it's a great way to show how you can begin to incorporate your different elements and start to guide your learner. If you'd like to see something more like this and in more detail, we will have follow up webinars and be more than happy to provide any resources or answer any questions about any of the elements within the storyline today. So without further ado, um, I'd like to open the floor up to questions and I'm just going to get up my Q&A slide. But for those of you that need to dash, thank you so much for attending today's webinar. Myself and Greg will be on the line for the next 10 minutes to go through any questions you have. So if you need anything else, just let us know. Thanks. So um, there's actually been a question come in. Uh, so I'm just going to throw this one over to Greg. Um, can I create my own character? Um, Greg, I'm sure you're probably going to be the best one to answer that one. Absolutely, you can. And I can give a quick demo, um, show you guys how to do that. So I'm going to take over the screen real quick. Uh, Charlotte, if you could hand that over. All righty, and I will just click over here into our template and beyond. Um, and as you can see, once you're in here, all you have to do is go up to the character screen, click create new character, and then the character creator will load. We've got three styles, contemporary, business friendly, and whiteboard, any of which can have a character built completely from scratch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick business friendly Let's select that guy. And then from here, what you can see is any aspect of your character from their clothing to their hair to the type of mouth can be quickly and easily changed. So I'm just gonna take his ears, change them up a little bit. I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of these eyes. Give him some new hair. Let's change its top to, you know, let's, let's make him a fireman. So what I'll do is I'll just go there, change his accessories, give him a, a hat and some bottoms. Let's see, there we go. From there, all I have to do is click save and I can import him immediately into the video that I was working on. So all I have to do from there, you can see my character screen is open. I go to the My Library and click him, and our brand new character is sitting right there on our intro screen. All right, back over to you, Charlotte. Fabulous, thank you so much, Greg. So um, there's been one question come in around Storyline and Beyond Training. So we at Omniplex are the certified trainers for Storyline um, and also for Beyond here in the UK. So for those of you that are interested in training, please feel free to pop into the questions panel and just put training into the chat panel and that would be fantastic. And there was another question that came in from Jackie. Um, so really interestingly, um, Jackie, how did you, how did, so the question from Jackie is, how did you get that white box and articulate to reveal itself um, rather than just appear? Um, so Jackie, it is all just the trick of video. Um, now I will quickly show my screen and just share with you um, what it actually looks like when we create content in Beyond. So, um, if I just quickly go across, um, what you'll start to see is right at the end, we have the white box appear. 
Um, so we've actually done this in Beyond. And then as that video ends, that's when we have our text start to reveal on Storyline. And that's when we do things like show that layer. So it's all a, a trick of the camera. And I see also from Jackie, there's a question about voiceovers. Um, and, you know, we are always adding uh, new things. I believe that only a few months ago we added uh, a new set of voiceovers. However, um, for anything professional, we always recommend that you record your own voice. It, it just sounds better. Um, and even with a laptop microphone, if you're in the right room, um, it's super easy to do. And, you know, I can actually even show that off real quick here. So let me take over the screen again. All right. And so what you can see here is we've got our character who's still sitting right here on the screen. I'm going to increase his size a little just so we can see his face a little bit better. And then from there, all you do is you click on the dialog button and you click add dialog and go mic recording. Click record and I can simply say, hello, always be safe with fire. All right, and then we'll just take a look at how that works here. Click preview and you'll be able to see. Hello, always be safe with fire. So that was real simple and not the most articulate thing I could have said at the moment, but it, you know, it, it shows that your characters always have really great voice. And, you know, I'm not here on a great mic or anything. Um, I'm just using my, my laptop microphone. So you don't need a, a fancy audio setup to, to record your own voiceovers. And it, it just always sounds more professional that way. All right, back over to Charlotte. Thank you so much, Greg. Um, so um, there was one question that came in from Rachel just around, can you save videos created and beyond into folders so they are easy to locate in the future? Um, Rachel, I would say that it's always fantastic and best practice to make sure that as a team, you store everything in folders. Um, it's probably one of the, the biggest things we hear, oh no, someone's left the business, we don't have this in a folder that we can access, um, or we don't know where it's saved because it's been saved locally. Um, so yes, you can download your videos um, from beyond into your folders, and I would be sure to add them to either a OneDrive or a local shared network as well. And just to add on to that, we have in the near, near future, uh, we have an update to our folder structure coming that'll allow you to see things in a, a list view as well as the view that you've got right now. So it'll make it a lot easier for you to go through and take a look at multiple videos and share those, things along those lines. Um, so the, it, it, we do have a folder structure, but it's going to be getting even better. Um, Greg, there's, there's been a question probably coming for yourself, just from Suzanne. Um, and she said that my branding team have, uh, have already got their own characters. Can these be imported in? Um, so you can't import, uh, it, it, I suppose you, it depends exactly what you mean by that. Um, if what you can do, if you want to, you can always import any image into beyond and use that in your video. However, it won't have actions. It won't have voiceover, uh, lip sync, those things, the same way that a beyond character does. Um, you won't be able to import something, you know, if, if you just have a, a, a completely separate character, um, you won't be able to import them and immediately make them move. Only the characters that are created in our Beyond Character Creator have, have all of the features. Um, let me see, we have another question coming in from Mohammed. 
asking if we can import our own back background and props and beyond. Um, you absolutely can. As I was saying, you can import backgrounds, you can import props, you can import any image, um, you know, logos, um, anything you might need. And if you have a beyond professional plan, you'll have a library of uploaded assets uh, that will be shared throughout your team that makes it really easy for you to stay on brand. Let's see, it looks like Charlotte, we have a question for you from Jackie. So yes, I think that, I think I can see the same question, Greg. I hope it's the same one. Um, so um, is there any tips to making the flow chart for the branch scenario look, it looked complex. Is there any tips for making it look easy? Um, I think when you're starting to structure and create out your branch scenario, it's important to remember where you ultimately want your end user to go. Um, that's going to be the biggest driver in the choices that you put in between. So even though that flowchart looks quite complex, just a, as an overview, when you have your end goal and your start goal, um, you know that in the middle, you're going to have key parts that you want in order to get to that end goal. Um, so the art of Basically, during a branch scenario, I would say is don't overcomplicate it and add in all of the parts that you want. All right, I see a question. Uh, is there any training for Storyline and beyond? There is. We have um, both for beyond on its own um, there is fantastic training resources uh, and our customer service team is always available as well. Um, we have a help center and we have a, a series of introductory videos that will get you started as well as, you know, probably 30 or 40 old webinars uh, that we have stored that you can watch that'll teach you everything from how to think about making a video to storyboarding to the actual nuts and bolts of sitting down and creating uh, the video. In addition, if you have a Beyond Professional membership, um, when your team is brought on, there will be team onboarding that will teach you, it, they'll basically bring you through step by step, creating your first video and getting your entire team set up to create as well as possible. Um, in addition to that, we, and I know Omniplex both, have had several webinars in the past uh, that are, you know, stored on our websites um, that are specifically about working with both Beyond and Omniplex, or, and Articulate at the same time. Thank you, Greg. Um, let me just check. I think there's probably time for um, one more question. Um, so there is one that's come in, which is how do you apply the actions to characters? Um, I know we saw um, a little snippet, Greg, but it'd be great just to obviously show um, where to go for that. Absolutely. Let me steal the screen back and I'll give a really quick demo about that. So just one moment while I take the screen. Alrighty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ugh, horribly deform my character. There we go. Move him up just slightly so we can see his actions a little bit better. Close down this screen. All right. And then adding an action is super easy. All I have to do is highlight my character here, go up into the upper right corner. And you can see there's this little action button. I'm going to click it and we have hundreds of actions that you can apply and they're categorized, you know, everything from poses to sports, um, eating and drinking. So I just want him to wave. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to search for wave. Now we have a ton of different waving, you know, crying for help, waving while he's drunk. I just want your basic greeting wave. There you go. And, you know, you can preview all the actions right here with the little preview button. I think that's perfect. However, I'm going to mirror him 
so that he is looking at the fire truck that's going to be coming in. Shrink him down so we don't have a giant staring at our fire truck. And then if I preview the scene right here, you'll see that my that character is standing there waving. It was that simple. Hello. Oh. And there we go. Amazing. Thank you, Greg. So um, I think that's time for the Q&As today. Um, but for those of you that do have um, a few niche questions, we will be in contact after this session just to make sure that you have all the information you need. Um, thank you so much for obviously attending. And um, I really hope that you enjoyed today's session. Um, it's been great having you. Um, I'll let Greg also do, uh, do a goodbye for you guys, but it's been lovely having you on today's session. Yeah, thank you to everyone for coming. Um, if anyone has any questions at all, uh, both me and Charlotte are available via email. Um, my email is greg.quinn at beyond.com. So if you want to reach out and ask anything further, I'm more than happy to speak with you. All right. Thank you very much, everybody.